I am a fool. That is uh, one thing for certain. Man. Here we're recording now. I knew, normally do an intro, but I'm, you know, you guys know who I am. My name's right there on the bottom of the screen, right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alexia. It's been a long time since I've had to, got a chance to sit down and talk to you one on one. Have we ever done this before? I can't remember. No, we haven't. We We've haven't. Never have. Not like this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I invited really you to do this, I don't know, what was it, a couple months ago? And you've been so busy that, you know, whatever. Shit happens, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, in Alexia here is one of my favorite uh, people I've met here, <laughs> uh, another coaching group. And even though you told me that you, I reminded you of your grandma, I took that as a compliment. I have, I a, really, I have a really wonderful... <laughs> <laughs> grandma one of my favorite people in my whole in my entire life was my way grandma so you know i didn't think that you know i looked like somebody that was bedridden wearing a diaper or anything like that so no i yeah no I, no 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 my grandmother the way that i i think i shared it with you um in the context so let's share the context brian okay um because you're, you've got such an open heart um and you're you're so you're so open in your heart and you're so um it's so easy to connect with you and you just you radiate this natural and organic love and essence that my grandmother had and it's just it was really I just felt in that moment to share that with you and just be really honest with you and you know her name is Cristala um she's not with us now but physically but um Thank you. That's very the, kind the crystal. Of you. That was very kind. Yeah. To say. Yeah. My favorite yeah. ground, my dad's mom, she was a wonderful lady. She had to put up with five of the most unruly kids you can possibly imagine. I mean, you know, anybody that can can manage that group. I don't know anybody on this planet that could have done that except for grandma. Mm -hmm. And I have a really interesting story about her. Oh when my she, God. Went off, Gosh. she was older. <laughs> She passed when I was uh, still in, in college. Uh, she was very intuitive. She lived through the Spanish flu. She was born in 1903 mm -hmm. and she got the Spanish flu and uh, she talks, she talked about it. She had an out-of-body experience because they thought she was going to die. And back then wow. the Spanish flu attacked uh, was harder on you when you were younger because your immune system would attack mm -hmm. your own body. Mm -hmm. And um, wow. she had so many interesting stories, uh, but she knew it was the last time I saw her. I, when I walked in the room, she was blind, you know, couldn't hear very well, but she knew the moment I stepped into the room, she said, Oh, hi, Brian. And I oh. sat down and, you know, I talked to her for a little while. And I remember that was the last conversation I had with her, but um, just an am amazing person. I even had some spiritual experiences where I felt like her presence was around me right after she, she passed. And, uh, mm -hmm. Was, uh yeah she was amazing the same with my grandmother when she passed i think i was uh, i was pregnant with my second born oh you froze and I just... Am I back do, do, you're do, back do, do. yeah okay so it was a summer's night and i just i was laying down on my bed early evening and the, the bedroom sliding doors were open and all of a sudden this breeze just came in and I could smell my grandmother. She always had this distinct, um, I don't know if it was a perfume that she wore, but it was a very distinct um, smell and a beautiful smell. And the room just filled with the smell. And I knew, I knew she was, I knew she was there and it was so beautiful, such a beautiful experience, you know? And it's amazing yeah. how smells work like that. I've had similar experiences where you, um, just one smell will take you back into like especially yeah. old memories you know it's like oh yeah. or even deja vu where yes you know all of a yes. sudden a smell when you're connecting to a sound. different like dimension yeah <laughs> yeah it's like i just went through this and you're, now they're trying to think back okay when did i go through this before you know was it in a dream was it uh yeah I, yeah yeah it's another life reality maybe. Bands for a second right it's yeah like, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's so cool yeah. and it reminds me of the movie um interstellar with yeah. macaulay uh matthew mcconaughey and when i watched that i was like oh wow okay i need to watch this a couple more times just to get it on another 
layer, you know, in different layers, but definitely multidimensional realities. And, you know, the, the core essence of, of what I got from that movie is that through love, we can actually change the, the future or, and the past. That's some, something like that. But Yeah, where are we I at now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that is a really interesting question though because i've always thought that it's like um you know am i existing in another timeline somewhere and that i'm not aware of maybe yes. i'm doing something else over here yeah. or, or i don't know yes. i'm only aware of this one so it's hard for yeah, me yeah exactly say, yeah yeah i don't know so tell us i think i think that's like yeah okay. go ahead Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Just go ahead and finish what you were going to say. I was going to say, I think, I think that's the magic of, um, you know, what Eckhart Tolle, Tolle teaches that being in the now, being fully in the now moment and in, in the moment you're in now, in the presence that you're in now. And when you can do that, you're in the totality of all your realities, I think. Yeah. You know, and you're affecting all the other realities. Well, and it's all collapsing around you, right? I mean, it's you have mm. access to all that information. You just don't. Yeah. It uh, opens up. Like you, you just open up. Yeah. And I've heard people talk about this and I realized that I was doing it unconsciously a lot this last year. I would just set my intent to know something and then mm. go to sleep. You know, I, I don't need to know it now. But if I just set the intent, then it's like, you know, your field expands when you sleep. And usually yeah. in those first waking moments, when you first get up, you'll have those epiphanies, you know, it'll be the first thing that's in your mind. And it's like, oh, and if you, sometimes if you don't write it down, you'll forget till later the day. It's like, oh, wait. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been in the middle of writing this contract, you know, that I was telling you about. And that's, that's one thing, because there's so many things, you know, if you're, when you're writing a, a document where you have to think of what if this happens or what if that happens yeah. to make sure that you're. And there's so many things. If you don't write something down, this happened to me yesterday. I was thinking about something and it's like, oh yeah, I got to put that in there. And then I forgot. And then I realized I forgot and I couldn't remember what it was. And so I was just like, all right, you know, because when you forget yeah. where you like lay something, it's almost pointless to try and focus on it a lot. You're better off just setting yeah. the intent or, okay, I'll remember set some time and then just, yes. you know, it seems like it comes yeah. back earlier that way. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, because you're detached. You're detached from needing to know in, in the moment. Yeah. And then it'll just come to you. Yeah. Yeah. You just go with the flow, right? Yeah. Intentionally. Yeah. Intentionally <laughs> going with the flow. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now. I haven't talked to you, I don't know, some time now. So uh I, I kind of have a decent idea what you're offering for your business, but I'm just curious. So I'm, I call myself an intuitive transformational soul journey coach. I don't know if I froze again. Did I freeze? No, you didn't freeze. You're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, intuitive transformational soul journey coach. And what I do is I basically help um, mostly women, empowered women to, and just, you know, find, find home within themselves so that they can live, beyond the world's standards so they can live you know according to their soul's higher standards and in their sovereignty and creating their heaven on earth so i support women to do that of course it, it means it is spiritual work it is mindset work it is um heart work i'm a heart activator code keeper um and i just i help i help them to truly connect with the truest part of themselves and remember who they are, why they're here and, and their magnificence so that that can translate into their reality, looking back at them, you know, so that they begin to see the shifts and the changes that the work that we did together happens on the inside and it begins to reflect to them in, in the outer reality. So when they start to see the physical reality shifting, then it's like, okay, then that's, like feedback you know from from the field that you're on you're on track and you're doing what you're meant to be doing so it's it's very um fulfilling work very very fulfilling almost like to the point of selfishness 
<laughs> you know, that I get to do something so beautiful and, you know, help and, you know, serve in this way. Um, and yeah, that's basically what I do. Cool. You know, it's very interesting you say, uh, mention the word selfishness, because I always uh, thought about this, you know, and people, everything we do is selfish, right? Mm -hmm. But the way we turn around in our mind, you know, because I always think that the more that I can uh, make other people's life fulfilled is going to be more fulfilling for me. So in mm -hmm. a way, it's selfish, right? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, yeah. <laughs> if you identify with everybody else too, right? And you're, yeah. you're trying to create all those relationships. I mean, it's just how you identify self, right? It's just yeah, exactly. this little me or the big picture. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. I love how you how you put that. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, uh, this is only you. In the, yeah, there's only one end. consciousness. There's only reality. one of us. <laughs> so, and we're just experiencing ourselves in an infinite number exactly. of ways. Yeah. 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 Now, when you when you mentioned that, I shared this on a on a masterclass the other day around you know the God frequency and that how I think each and every single one of us has to live out our own unique I won't even call it mission like your 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 divine path that why you're here and when you do that when we're able to lock in you know, our bit, our soul piece of why we're here, what we're meant to be doing, how we're meant to be like living this life. You're locking in a, a, a certain harmonic or tone of God frequency, of God, of creator that only you're able to express because of your unique design of you. And every time, every time you move through that and you're, you're living your life through that, through your uniqueness, through your authentic self, right? You're, you're unlocking the next um, harmonics, let's say, of God. So we're basically, we're basically like unlocking, like with each challenge, with each, with each um, evolution we want to experience and that, you know, creation and creator wants to experience through us, we're actually opening up to another level of God frequency being expressed through us. Um, and I think if, if everyone lives that way, you know, plugged into their divine authentic self and, you know, soul purpose and soul mission, we're basically activating heaven on earth, you know, on the planet. And it, it just makes it so much more, um, how can I say it? Like, not magical, but so much more purposeful to continue to do the inner work so that you're you're part of the bigger picture you're part you're you are required to walk this path you're required to live your authentic self and nobody else nothing more and nothing less so you have to be that frequency that breathed life through you you know yeah. um yeah so, so yeah that's a beautiful way of putting it i always just picture as everything is just growing right because you're um it is constantly uh, yeah and it, it, you're, it's a, an infinite process of self-discovery because you're uh you're constantly just discovering more and more and more about yourself which is being yeah. you know is coming to you but in the world around you so it's yeah. all you're just moving more energy and information just yeah it's like the expanding ever expanding consciousness and ever like expanding. Tree. yeah <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool yeah yeah there, there's lots of different ways to look, look at that you know you can look at it from a lot of different angles like you know we're all growing at a womb too you know mm. you leave your mother's yeah. womb and now yeah. you're so you know in a, in a larger womb so now we're all those cells need to find where they're at in oh, the body. Cool. i was thinking about that ex the exact this exact same analogy the other day mm -hmm. that the earth is a giant womb yeah it's Mostly water, like it's the exactly like your own body, right? Yeah, we're all just yeah. cells of a larger body trying to figure out where we're supposed to fit. Yeah, trying to until figure out our jobs. It, <laughs> until you figure it out, you're going to be unhappy, right? Because you're not really yes. doing what you're supposed to be doing in the body. Yeah, you know, if you're just going to the nine to five and going to work in it, you know, wherever. I mean, maybe that's what you're supposed to be doing. You know, mm -hmm. every, there's there's a everybody has what they like to do more than anything. 
That's one thing that has really occurred to me. I'll, I'll let you answer this. So I'm going to get done here. Cause you know, I, I am always constantly breaking down, you know, breaking things down. I'm a systemic healer. I can break down any kind of system mm -hmm. you can think of and just think about how it works. And, you know, my mind is just constantly just going down that path. So, um, yes. yeah. yeah, but there's certain things that I just don't like to do. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I'm not an advertiser. I don't want to be out there merchandising and, you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So yeah. I'm constantly creating things. I don't know how much stuff I've created in the last year. Who knows? But um, so I always wonder, okay, so how am I going to fit in the body? How You know, because I know I'm just going to plop because now I finally figured out what I really want to build. And now I'm just going to, I'm just, you know, my intent is just to however I plop into place and whatever, you know, gets yeah. attracted to to move in yes. that direction, you know, uh, that's just where I'm at, you know? So, uh, I, I know that's kind of how it works because you're, you're using your masculine and feminine energy at the same time, right? You're creating, and then you're just attracting what you need to support whatever it is that, that you need to do. Right. So yeah. like, what do you think about that? No, I think like when you share how you've created so many things, like those little creations that you've already done, they had to, they led you to where you are now. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's part of the steps that you had to take. It's part of, I was listening to someone on Instagram today, Victoria Washington, and she just really resonated with me. It's part of the development of, you know, like if you think of, a, of the old way we used to take photos, you know, the camera film, the little roll-up film that you pop in the camera and that gets developed and you get your photos we're in like we have to be willing to develop our character to be able to hold you know the frequency that you know, of abundance or the frequency of your you know your your container or your business we have to be willing to be developed you know and i think those creation those creative things that you that you were part of that's part of your development and it's part of the process because if we if we're not willing to go through those like phases you're gonna get, get you get caught up in like other things you get caught up in trying to do stuff that somebody else is doing or trying to mimic somebody else another creator and then you're actually taken off of your path of your you know your soul your um your god-given gifts and why you're here and what is wanting to be birthed through you so develop the mindset develop the um the stamina the um you know the the bandwidth to to hold what the higher vision is showing you you know and yeah. it, it's part of embodiment it's part of integrations it's imagine like i'm sure you learned so much through that whole process of the past year about yourself oh yeah not just not only about just you know, life is mostly just about letting things go. When you mm -hmm. agree, you just yeah. constantly just letting things go that just don't matter. Yes. <laughs> it's like, yes. well, that doesn't matter. And I resonated with something that you told me, I think it was before uh, Christmas, where you were just kind of prioritizing your family. Finally, that you were spending too much time in your business and you kind of try to prioritize your family and your internal relationships for a short time. Yeah, you know, I, I had to do that. I had to, and you'd have to find balance and by yeah. finding balance, you really have to fall out of any kind of fear of lack, right? Because, you know, mm. if you feel like you're working 60 or 70, 80 hours a week, you're not, you know, you're, that's definitely a fear of lack mentality, right? Where you're just yeah, yeah. pushing yourself yeah. nonstop. You have to be, you have to be okay. Like for me, it really was about being okay with working, like fully committed to my, to my business and also being committed to my kids, which me and my and my husband, which means working less hours on my business. Like I, I really, I drew the line around. Um, like I wanted to have a a special, like very connected time with my kids over Christmas, and not come you know new year the new year and and look back and say oh you know I really I blew it I really blew it I was so lost in my business or I was so lost in like creating this class and this program and blah 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 
um, that I, I I missed out on, you know, like really connecting with them. And I think we have to take these deeper looks, you know, within us and really um, it comes down to, I think, to values, what, what values are driving you. And if you're fully aligned with your values, then you're okay. You're okay with, you know, saying no to something or somebody and saying yes to what's driving you, driving you like fully at, at the soul level. Yeah, and stay fully connected with, you know, your family and your internal group. Because if you ever feel like you're not fully connected there, like you're kind of pulling apart, then it's like, yes. all right, I'm too far in this direction. I need to yeah. adjust. Yeah. 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 Agreed. And I think having kids, they really like reflect that to you very fast if you're disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yoo wake up. <laughs> Your kids are, I think, are a little younger than mine. My youngest is 15 now. So yeah. he's a teenager. In order for me to connect with that boy, and I remember what I was like when I was a teenager. Man, yeah. I, you know, my parents and I did never have conversations. You know, even uh -huh. if we sat down and had dinner together, there was, you know, if they asked me questions, it was clicks and grunts, right? And yeah. there wasn't much going on there. <laughs> he's, he's actually better than I was you know, give him credit. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, he's a lot more, um, uh, I grew up in a little bit different environment than he did. You know, he's, he's forced to interact <laughs> with me because I don't want to, I don't want to lose contact with him. Right. I mean, I love my boy. I want to make sure that, you know, you know, he, he feels supported by me, you know, no matter what he's going through. So yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a critical time. I think the teenage years is a critical time. And it doesn't last forever. It's temporary. So it does require some patience. But I think like my youngest is six, Sophia, and Cristiano is 10. I think a lot of the work happens before the teenage years where you get, you know, the connection is already made. And you know that you can, act, you can get through anything. Like you can get through the, you know, the, the bumpy, bumpy path, the roads of the teenage years and you know them wanting to be alone in their rooms and them like always you know the face in the screens and everything and as long as you have that connection um the child the child will will know that there's love and they'll always come they'll come back they'll come back to you always yeah 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 and i mean even though my i never really talk to my parents now you know that much during high school I always you know I knew that we had a loving atmosphere and so I always came back yeah. to them, you know it wasn't ever yep. you know it wasn't ever I cut myself off from my parents you know I mean heck, I live with my dad yeah. right now you know yeah. I, I think I'm the only one of the boys that actually could live with dad <laughs> you know maybe maybe now it's a little different but I think maybe dad could maybe live with Andy for a while because Andy's changed a little bit but for the most part, dad and I have been together here for about six, seven years and oh, ever wow. since mom died, right? Yeah, so, that's special. Yeah. yeah. Just give me a second, Brian, because I need to just tell the kids to lower their body. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. So let's, yeah. I want to hear a good story. You got to tell me a good story. I, I like the story about how you, you know, you painted up your friend, you were young and the, the makeup story where you <laughs> put the makeup on the girl. <laughs> so, oh my God. Yeah. You sound like an antagonist like me when I was a kid. I was a terrible antagonist. I would, you know. I used to love getting like bothering the kids. I used to love bothering the younger ones. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got a kick out of you know seeing them crying or screaming or laughing any emotion any emotional reaction I was like there I wanted to see it um maybe I had it was because I wasn't really getting the attention that I wanted from my parents or the elder kids I don't know but I was having fun <laughs> so well, I'll tell you the story yeah like if you're like me though you're kind of like you want to test people psychologically to see where they're at right when you're, and I had I had to get out of that because I realized that mm -hmm. I was doing that and I was just like this is not healthy right I shouldn't yes. be breaking people down to see where they're at yeah. you know where their fears are or where their anxieties are that's not healthy it's not good yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah so 
um, the, the story that you're referring to, I think I was about, um, how old was I? Uh, she must have been about three. So I must have been about nine, eight or nine um, years old. And we were at, so I grew up in South Africa and very big Greek family. And we were at one of my aunt's house and there was some sort of like party, lunch party, I don't know, barbecue or something. And we were all there and all the moms were in the, you know, the living room area having their tea and their cakes and their coffees. And um, this one cousin of mine, her name's Anne in English, Anna in Greek. And she just loved putting makeup on and she just loved getting into her mom's closet and putting on the heels. And she just, she loved lipstick. So I pulled her to the side this day and I told her, Anna, would you, do you want some lipstick? And she's like, yeah, yeah. So I said, okay, come. How so old I took her you when this happened? I think I was about nine. Okay. Yeah, I think it was about eight or nine. So I took her outside in the garden. <laughs> And she's such a beautiful girl. I mean, she lives in the same town as us now as well. Wonderful girl, you know. And um, I took her to the garden. We hid behind a bush. Well, I hid her behind a bush. And I took the lipstick, a bright red lipstick that I had taken from my aunt's room. Started to put on her lipstick. You know, I was putting on her this red lipstick on her beautiful lips. And then I just started to draw, <laughs> to draw all over her face. And... And I was like, oh, you look so good. Go go show your mom. Go show your mom how beautiful you look. <laughs> and she went and they freaked out. And she was just, you know, she was just smiling. She thought she had, you know, her makeup done. <laughs> it was beautiful. How, how many people were there? Was it and during a party? It's so, it was so funny. I mean, and we still talk about this today. And it's such a, it's such a beautiful um, memory. <laughs> But also, like my sisters, when they hear the story, they're like, "Yeah, you were a little devil, Alexia." Even if you ask any of my cousins, they'll start going on about how I used to bother the kids. And you know, if you people who know me now, they would they like say, "No, you, no." But people change. It's still in there somewhere, right? You think? You got you know, to let it out every once in a while. I love I love to tickle my kids, you know, until they like can't breathe. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> My oldest daughter was just tell, reminding me of this because I used to uh, become the pincher monster, right? And I'd, <laughs> I'd come after him and I don't do that anymore. And I don't do that to <laughs> my younger kids because I used to pinch and like, yeah. I, like my um, mom used to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but she used to like pinch like under our skirts, you know, on the thigh. And she used to like really I know. Like, oh, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Close to your hip flexor where you're just like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was terrible with my yeah. older kids. They were, it was, uh, but it's, those are, it's funny though, when they, when they come back and they say that was their favorite memory, even though yeah. they, oh. it's like, oh, yeah. all right. Cause she tried to get me to do <laughs> okay, it again. You... I was like, I can't do that on call. I can't do that on call. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah. So, so do you have any questions for me? I never ask anybody to see if they have any questions for me. Um, what can I ask you? Uh, yeah, like, are you happy right now where you are in your life? Oh, yeah. Well, I just, Good. you know, at some point you just finally let go. So, um, and I, this is actually, I was watching this movie because I hadn't seen it in a long time. And I heard this quote last night uh, by Christopher mm. Walken. It mm. was from The Wedding Crashers. <laughs> have you ever seen The Wedding Crashers? I have, yes. They are just the, the worst <laughs> people on the world, right? They're just crashing weddings, just trying to get them. girls. Wow. And it, it is funny. I mean, it, the movie really is funny. But he finally, you know, um, his daughter <coughs> plays the Secretary of State, and his daughter is is picking out flowers, and she's not happy with the guy she's going to marry. And, you know, and he says, he says, look, you know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. All we can do is make the best decisions today with the information that we have. And I was just like, wow, that's a, that's really good advice. If you just, just let go of what happens tomorrow and just do what it feels is right to do now, then that's all you can really do. Right. I mean, it's, there's nothing, yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you get too focused on, um, what could happen, then you're never going to be present. You're never going to be happy no. with, you know, so I, I thought that was really interesting for such a, a profound quote from, you know, a well-known actor and such a, just a, 
basically just a you know just a bad comedy <laughs> it was actually the best part of that movie it was the most uh spiritually definitely the most spiritually enlightening quote in that movie wow. yeah wow. oh i lost you questions there's things being asked sorry um it reminds me like the quote you shared it reminds me of um like I did my life coach training in 2011 one of the best things I ever did and my trainer who were still very very good friends um he shared with us he taught he taught he just was sharing how if you if you're able to follow your excitement your bliss in every decision in everything you do you you can be sure you're gonna you're gonna build a beautiful life if we're like what you said now if we're focused on what might happen what might go wrong you're literally plugging into um what you don't want from your life instead of plugging into the potential of what you're calling in and what might be possible because of what you're considering mm -hmm. and you can always like tune in is this is this in alignment with my bliss, with my with something that brings me excitement? Does it get my juices flowing? And you can decide, you know, you can decide like that. Yeah. Why not? Why have we, like, we've been taught to, you know, weigh the pros and cons and, you know, make sure you're making the right decisions. But are there any wrong decisions? I mean, you know, I... Yeah, I don't think there are. Sometimes I wonder, you know, like you can look back and judge yourself and think that you've made bad decisions or you can look back and think to yourself, okay, that didn't go out as I planned. What did I learn from it? And, you know, what am I, what did I gain from that moving forward? And of, of course it's something for, that you have learned. that's going to support you in something else because I think everything happens for a reason. Yeah. My whole, this past year is in support of that because and I, I you know I, I just got done writing a book I need to edit it and and do some other things before I start throwing it out there but um if I at any point you know I you you knew me at the beginning of last year I was you know trying to start that decentralized decision making program and if at any okay. point I had an investor show up and say hey let's build this let's start selling to the public then I wouldn't have I would have just started going for, I would have started making money, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. have learned all the lessons I did later than year. And I wouldn't be building what I'm building now. I, I never would have got there. So, and I felt like there were doors that got closed for specific reasons. You know, it was like, um, my higher self was making sure that I was being guided in the right direction to where I was supposed to go. Otherwise, like if I would have just, said, Hey, you know, I'm gonna, I need to get finance and just totally plugged in and went after funding over and over. Then I wouldn't be where I'm at now. I wouldn't be. Mm. Um, so I, to, to be honest, I've completely let go of any expectation of even what I'm doing now is where I'm going to be. Cause it's, yeah. you know, it's like, um, you just don't know. You just allow your higher self to keep feeding information and then going down the path yeah. you're supposed to go down. And then if you're doing that, you're always supported. You don't have to be worry about not being supported. When, and when you look at it from a higher perspective, you're always in this abundance because for true abundance for me is just being surrounded by the people I love and being able to spend time with people, you know, the way I, I want them to spend time with them. So um, that part yeah. doesn't really mean, you know, having... It wouldn't matter if I had a billion dollars in the bank or ten dollars, as long as I'm doing the same thing, right? It really does not matter. Yes. Think of it from a higher perspective. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean that's my story behind, especially this past year, because and I wouldn't have learned, you know, I have a a good friend that I talk to quite a bit now, and she uh, she made a lot of money when she was younger, and she ended up getting into social groups where they were all really competitive about making certain amounts of money. And it really drove mm -hmm. her to be competitive and she ended up having a heart attack and she had to pull wow. back out of that. Uh, that mm -hmm. group Cause she realized, she says, uh, you know, she couldn't, um, she just couldn't do it anymore. 
And she's much happier what she's doing now because she finally started following what she really wanted to do instead of being competitive, you know, in that um, that high business environment. So, yeah, it's it's. I think it's an over over masculine being in your over masculine. Um, it's not sustainable. It's just not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah, but like, share another question for you. You went. You went on a river recently. You spent some time on a river last year, I think. Um, well, I was on the river a lot last year. Yeah. Yeah. And how how does that support affecting a like a very big sense of inner peace? Um, in you. I just and... love rivers. There's so much wildlife, and the thing that I really like about rivers is the fact that they change every day. You never know. Mm. You know, rivers are exactly like life. They're um, they never the same. They and there's a lot of wildlife down there that I, I enjoy the wildlife and just to to see the trees and the mm. birds and mm. this river here that I have right next to me is what is a a really good bird watching river. There's so many uh, different types of species of birds down there, especially in the springtime. We're coming up another two or three months. I'll be down there all the time because wow. Um, and then if you get out in the ri- in the early morning, you'll oh, find yes. you'll yeah. find groups of river otters playing together in little groups, oh, and cute. they'll check you out, right? Because <laughs> they're, they're smart and they're curious, and they'll actually like pop up next to you, and you can <laughs> have a conversation with them, connect with them, you know, you connect with them at the spirit level. Yeah, the otters. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's wow. smarter. It's, they're all wildlife's connected, right? We're all connected. Mm. So um, that was one interesting thing when I went and saw uh, Karina, you know, the head of our coaching group last year. And when mm-hmm. I went to Puerto Rico, I went into the water and uh, I just had this feeling that something was close by. And all of a sudden a big, a dolphin came out of the water, just like oh my goodness, 20 wow. feet from me. And I was like, huh, <gasps> he's just probably saying hi, right? Sense oh, that I was there wow. and decided to say hi, yeah. Yes. Wow. That was cool. What an experience. Yeah. So Beautiful. I'm not going to keep you here all the time. I mean, I anybody who's listening to this probably is, is getting ready to shut off anyway. So yeah, we could go on for hours. Yeah. Um, Brian and I. Yeah. <laughs> so give me, give me your, uh, your farewell speech and we'll cut her off. <laughs> My farewell speech. Okay. Um, <laughs> What should I leave you with? Nuggets of wisdom. Yeah, nuggets um, of wisdom. Yeah, I mean, just stay true. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to, you know, the God frequency within you because we're all we're, we're all plugged in. It's just based, it's about removing the the noise, you know, and taking the time to go down to the river, and being in being in that space being in that peace so that you can hear and receive and and get the guidance because uh, you know i believe that the guidance is always flowing through us but if we're so overwhelmed with noise with with life and distractions you know i could go on and on about the different programming that's being run you know on humanity and how you know the matrix works and how you know if everybody's just like taking it day by day because they're too scared to think of a better world or a, you know a higher reality um but when you remove that noise and you connect you really connect to your heart and to to god at this you know at the heart level you know with all of your being you will receive your guidance you will receive um answers to your prayers you will receive your intuition you will be i think you you will begin to have a confidence in your life, in your your soul mission, in your gifts. And if, you know, I don't know who your audience is, if they're spiritually orientated, if they're entrepreneurs, if um, whatever, um, you know, you, you matter. And we're all significant parts of the puzzle. And you get to plug in. You get to plug into what that piece, the piece that you're here to, to be, and start to, you know, function from that higher vibration. 
Thank you, Alexia. That's I don't it. think I could have done better. That's for That's sure. it. <laughs> but it's What's a common your... message, right? Yes, it is. And I've, yeah. I've started hearing that message a lot lately. Yeah. Everybody that's I think 2023, successful. yeah, I think 2023 is like really um, a very spiritual year. Um, also because numerically it's a number seven, it's a spiritual year. And we're, I think everybody's being called to connect to, you know, their spiritual um, values and like really start to live in a higher, higher vibration, higher reality with like surrendering, like letting go of what doesn't matter, letting go of, you know, the, the conditioning, the programs, the stories, the excuses, the illusions, the holograms. Um, yeah. And there's a lot, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot in every single context of your life. There's stories being played out. Every single context, whether it's with your kids, whether it's your marriage, your partner, your relationships, your business. There's stuff there. You know, if you're feeling any form of like feeling stuck or confused, you know, go in, go deep, go within the story. What is it? This is my year. I'm the year of the rabbit. <laughs> oh, it's your so, year? Yeah. Cool. Because, you know, every 12 years, it's your year again, right? For the, yes. the Chinese zodiac. So yes, I'm 48 yeah. this year. So this is my fourth, my fourth year of the rabbit. <laughs> what you, you're 48. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, by the way, have you, have you thought of a title for your book? Yeah. You have a title. Okay. It's cool. uh, there is only one heart. That's the title. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's actually the reality we live in. We're all connected right here in our heart space. That's where mm -hmm. we're connected. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you ever, you look at a larger picture, like if you look at a mm -hmm. galaxy, you're just looking at a heart yes. and everything's collapsing towards the heart. And it doesn't matter what you look at or you're looking at yeah. a cell or an atom or a tree, right? The heart yep. of a tree, it's all collapsing yes. around the heart. Yeah. yeah that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love that. It's the unity consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks for joining me, Alexa. Thank you so much. We'll keep in touch, right? Uh, we'll keep in touch. Thanks so much for the opportunity and lots of love to your audience and to this beautiful space you created. Thanks so much, Brian. Yeah.